Okay, so in a previous video, we took a look at a circuit with multiple diodes in it. And in this video, we're going to take a look at the exact same circuit, except the difference is that we've flipped the resistances in that the 10K is where the 5K was before and the 5K is where the 10K was before. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at how this changes the operating states of the diodes in this circuit or with this change. And essentially what we're looking for is, is uh, VO, ID1 and ID2, that is the output voltage seen here. Uh, maybe we can highlight that here. So this is the output voltage here. We want to know the current running through this branch. We want to know the current running through this diode. And those three things will tell us exactly what the conduction states. So implicitly, we will have determined the conduction states of diode D1 and diode D2. So how are we going to start this? We're going to start this by assuming first that both D1 and D2 are off. Okay, now if they are off, what does this circuit look like? Let's redraw our circuit so we can better understand what it is is actually happening. So this resistor is still there. This now will become an out, or an open circuit, sorry. Uh, this point here we'll call V out, still. Now we go down here and we will have a resistor there. This is plus 10 volts. This is minus 10 volts. This one here is 5K and this one here is 10K. We call this voltage D VD1 and we call this one VD2. Now, if you recall, we need to check to see if this uh, assumption is valid. So what are the things that we need to check? We need to check that VD1 is less than 0 0.7 volts and VD2 is less than 0 0.7 volts. Now, why do we use 0 0.7 volts? It's because we're assuming these diodes are real. Uh, and when we assume that they're real, we're assuming the constant voltage drop model as opposed to the ideal model. Now, if the question explicitly states that we want to deal with the ideal model, then these numbers would be replaced by 0 um, and 0 for VD1 and VD2. So the condition for ideal is 0, point, uh, is zero sorry and the condition for constant voltage is 0 0.7. Okay, so why don't we take a look at what voltages we have. Clearly, we see that uh, since there's an open circuit here and an open circuit here, this entire voltage will appear at this node. So I can say that VD1, let's call that node, I don't know, let's give it a name, let's call this node VB. Okay, so VD1 is going to equal 0 minus VB. Now, what is VB? VB clearly equals minus 10 volts. So 0 minus minus 10 volts is going to actually give us plus 10 volts. And this is for VD1. But wait a minute. We said that VD1 uh, should be less than 0 0.7 volts because this diode has to be off, meaning this assumption is actually invalid. Now, what if we had started instead with VD2? Let's take a look at VD2. Since there's an open circuit in, v in this branch, this diode's branch, this entire voltage here, this positive 10 volts, will appear, appear entirely across this node here. And at the same time, VB appears here. So VD2 is going to be equal to this voltage minus this voltage. So it's going to be equal to 10 minus minus VB. And so this is going to equal to 10 plus 10, and this equals 20 volts. And you see right away that both of these are actually wrong. Because we said both of them are off. But if these voltages are greater, so we see that this one is positive 10, we see this one is positive 20, but we said both should be less than 0 0.7 for that assumption to be valid. Therefore, we can say that uh, this state is invalid. So let's move on to the other one now. Now, if, if you recall in the previous uh, video, we saw that the actual conduction state was both diodes were on. So let's take a look at what that looks like in this case. Maybe that'll shed some light, uh, or maybe that's a good place to start because we know that in the other case, they were both on. It's the same circuit. We've just flipped resistors. So maybe in this case, you know, both diodes are going to be on too. So let's assume both D1 and D2 are on. So now what does my circuit look like? Again, we're assuming the constant voltage drop model. 
Um, so if both of them are on, then I'll have a constant voltage source there. I will have this resistor there as always. I'll have that resistor there. This one goes to my output, and I'll have another constant voltage drop there. So this here is 0 0.7, this here is 0 0.7, this here is VO. I call this one plus 10, this one is minus 10, this resistor is 5K, this resistor is 10K. Now what's the condition to check here? I have ID1 here, I have ID2 here. Now in this case, once the diodes are on, we check that ID1 is greater than zero, and ID2 is greater than zero. That means the current going through these must be positive since diodes only allow positive currents to flow through them. So how then do we find ID1 and ID2? So first let's call this thing VB again, as we did in the previous case. So what is ID1 going to be? Well, ID1 we can't find directly since there's no resistor there. So we'll have to find ID2. We'll have to find a third current here. Let's call this IT for I total, just because it's going to be the sum of those two currents. Well, that's the assumption at least. Um, and let we can find ID2 by a simple KVL uh, plus Ohm's law. Uh, and so what we get for ID2, uh, well, first let's find VB. So let's say that VB is actually just going to equal 0 minus 0 0.7. And so this is minus 0 0.7 volts. Because I start here, and I decrease by a 0 0.7 voltage uh, drop across this constant supply. And then I come to VB. So I have here VB now. Now the current in this branch is going to equal this voltage minus this voltage minus this voltage divided by this resistor. So it's the total drop in this branch divided by the total resistance in this branch. So the total resistance is 5. The total voltage drop is going to be 10 minus 0 0.7 minus VB. So I can say that ID2 is equal to 10 minus 0 0.7 minus VB divided by 5. This is going to be 10 minus 0 0.7 minus minus 0 0.7 because keep in mind VB is already negative and this is going to be divided by 5. And so ID2 equals 2 milliamps. Since the 0 0.7s just cancel, 10 divided by 5 is 2. Okay. Now let's do, uh, let's find IT now. So what is IT? IT is going to equal VB minus, minus 10 volts divided by 10. So I have this voltage at this node minus this voltage here divided by this resistance gives me this current. Okay. VB we said is minus 0 0.7. Minus minus is going to give me plus 10. And this is going to be divided by 10. So I find that ID2 actually equals 0 0.93 milliamps. Now if we write a KCL at that node VB, so I say KCL. And what does this KCL give me? This KCL will give me that ID1 is going in, ID2 is going in, and the result of those is IT. Well, that's the way I've drawn it at least, okay? I mean, at the same time, you can consider all currents to be going in or all currents to be going out, and you can write the sum of all currents is equal to zero. You'll get the exact same equation, whichever way makes the most sense to you. The assumption here I made is that this current goes down, and this one goes down, and this one goes down. Therefore, this current plus this current must equal this current, and the signs really end up taking care of themselves if you stay consistent with the way you actually um, label your circuit in terms of current. So we're looking for ID1. And I'll find that ID1 is equal to IT minus ID2. IT is actually less than ID2, so I expect ID1 all of a sudden is going to equal a negative number. So this will be 0 0.93 minus 2. Now this will give me minus 1.07 milliamps. But wait a minute. I said this diode D1 was conducting. If this diode D1 was conducting, then this current shouldn't be negative. So this is invalid. So this assumption is invalid. So I've already put the cross there. I don't need to put another cross there. 
So now let's take a look at this intuitively. Um, now the next assumption, obviously, we had the initial case where both were off. We had this case where both are on. Now, the thing is we assumed that D2 was on and that condition was met because we found this is two milliamps. But now the question is, what's the next assumption I wanna make? Now, intuitively speaking, I will choose this to be off because according to the circuit that I had here, this one was on. Now, if this was valid, there's no reason to let's go the other way and turn this one on and this one off because then all of a sudden I have a whole new set. I'm guessing since this was on in this case, you know, maybe it should be on in the end. When I had this on, I had it, it was it was valid. You see, this is okay. So maybe we should write that. So this, this is okay. Um, but this one is not. So let's change this one state and then reanalyze the circuit. It might turn out that we're wrong and we have to actually turn the other one on. But I think this is a sort of good uh, intuitive um educated guess to make as to what the actual assumption or actual states are. So what I'm going to assume now is I'm going to say assume what? What do we have? We have D1 is off and I have D2 is on. Okay. So now what does my circuit look like if I do that? I have D1 is off, so that's an open circuit. Uh, I have this resistor going down to the minus 10. I have this resistor here. I have this going out to V out. And I have a constant drop there. This is still plus 10 volts. This is still minus 10 volts. This is still 0 0.7 volts. And this is VD1. Keep in mind I have ID2 now. And this will be V out at that node. And this one here is 5k, and this here is 10k. And so what do I have to check now? So in this case, I check ID2 is greater than 0, and VD1 is less than 0 0.7. Now ID2 greater than 0, because I'm assuming this diode is on. VD1 less than 0 0.7, because I'm assuming this diode is off. Now we'll of course have to check both of these conditions and then I will have to find V out once I have checked. So how do I check for ID2? ID2 is simple because it's a simple series branch if you see. This entire thing is in series. Maybe we can highlight it. This entire branch is in series. Since it's in series, I can say that ID2 is equal to the total voltage drop. So I go from 10, I say minus minus 10, minus 0 0.7, or whichever way you want to take it really, it doesn't matter. And this will be divided by the total resistance. In this case, it's going to be 5 plus 10, which will give me 15. So this, once I divide this out, I will get that this is 1.29 milliamps, and this is ID2. And if you compare this with our condition, this is okay, because I want ID2 to be a positive number. Now the question is, I need to find VD1. So to find VD1, we'll need to look back at our little friend VB here that we drew on to the circuit afterwards. And so now what is VB going to equal? I say that VB is going to equal minus 10 plus 10 ID2. Now why? Because I'm here, minus 10, and to get to this node, I have to go up in potential because I'm assuming this is going down. I could look at it the same way this way. I can say 10 minus 5 times ID2 minus 0 0.7 equals VB, or I can take it from the bottom and I can go up. And you'll really find that the numbers are the exact same no matter which way you take it. Um, this one probably just has less terms and is easier to deal with. So this is going to be minus 10 plus 10 times 1.29. Now if you actually, uh, well, it's a really simple one to probably add. Uh, this is 2.9 volts. And so that's VB. Now what's VD1? VD1 equals 0 minus VB because it's the voltage at this node, which is 0 because it's grounded, minus the voltage at this node, which is the voltage here, which is VB, which we found here to be 2.9. So this is equal to minus 2.9 volts, which is also OK. So that means this state or this combination of states we've assumed here is correct. 
So now what can we do? We found VD1, we found ID2. We want to find, well, this is part of our answer, I guess, so we can give this a box right away. ID2 is part of our answer. Um, what else do we want to find? We want to find VO, right? So VO is going to equal what? VO is going to equal 10 minus this voltage drop, and that's VO. So I'm going to say this is 10 minus 5ID2, and so this is going to be 10 minus 5 times 1.29, and V out is going to give me 3.55 volts. Now we also have to find ID1, but I think ID1 is probably the easiest thing to find. It is 0 milliamps. And why is it 0? Because that diode is cut off. So we found in this case that that assumption that we made in the previous question when we had the opposite, when these two resistors were actually flipped, isn't valid anymore. And so now all of a sudden we have a completely different circuit within a completely different uh, combination of states uh, operating uh, for you know, this thing to be valid. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down below. If you have any suggestions for videos you would like to see or topics you would like covered in future videos, please leave them in the comments below uh, or feel free to send me a message. Uh, and other than that, I want to thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a great day and we'll see you in the next one.